Hey! Hi. How, are <laughs> How are you? Hello. Good. Good? <laughs> Ashley, there's a bunch of people here who who probably don't know you, so I'm wondering, what are you drinking? You have five you have five kids no. so in the evening. Is that is that <laughs> it's medicinal tea. It's med <laughs> <laughs> I that's what a lot of people call it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh yeah no it actually is it's for sleep <laughs> so i could sleep to take care of the kids it, okay so it puts you to sleep yeah. hopefully not hopefully not right away ashley because no. we need to, we need no. to we need to talk oh uh, it, it's good to see you, your face uh, i don't know if you and i've ever officially have we ever officially met you and i uh in costco yes that's right i remember now <laughs> Costco's a place that i meet a lot of people to be honest with you yeah, no, uh, your wife and I are friends. Yes, she so told me she saw you today. Are, yeah, we are friends by association, so. Okay, yeah. Good. And your boys, your boys teach um, my kids Sunday school and. I'm sorry. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. Now, they were a huge part of them uh, at uh, day camp a couple years ago, like, yeah, so. That's nice to have a phone chat oh, yeah, with it's you. It's great to chat with you. I'm really excited to talk to you. So listen, I, I'm going to be learning along with other people. Can you tell me just a little bit about your family and where you're from? Yeah. Are, you, are you originally from Abbotsford? Is this your hometown? No, no, I'm American. <gasps> I immediately <laughs> like you. No, this, I'm both. I know. Are you both? Uh, are you Canadian and American now? No, I'm a permanent resident. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, but... Honestly, with the current stuff, I think I'm going to take my citizens test and I'm going to get my citizenship. But I was born and raised in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I met my husband. He went to school, university in Chicago uh, at Trinity uh, International. And yeah. we met at a wedding. Oh, okay. So, I... Um, we dated long distance. We actually spent 27 days together uh, before, we before got you got married. <laughs> wow. <Yes. laughs> Things that were like, we won't let our kids do that. But yeah, totally. You um, have kids, you're like that. You'll never, ever do uh, that. Yeah. No, no. So, um, yes, I was raised there, uh, did my university, met him, and then uh, I immigrated here and I joined the Tier family, which you had Aaliyah. I on. did, yeah. She's uh, doing well. She's actually, I saw her name come up. Hi, Aaliyah. Good to see you. Yeah. Well, not see you. Beast. Oh, yeah. Find you. I hope, so, she, I hope she's feeling well. Yes. So, yeah. Um, but you're a baseball fan, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just got new swag for my son's team. It came okay. from mail. I was planning on wearing it to, uh, okay. to baseball games, but I, yeah, there's no games on right now. I'm not no. even sure he's going to be able yeah. to make the team anyway. He's not very good. But the American in me has to tell you, my dad is the official scorer for the St. Louis Cardinals. What? How so. is it that I don't have tickets from your dad? <laughs> well, I one of the one of the best stories, very quickly, and then we'll get to the real things. But my husband and I, when we were dating, we were like we literally 27 days together. So every moment that we spent together had to be like intentional and like nobody else and just very intense. So my dad was, the Cardinals were in the World Series, in the playoffs. And my dad was like, I have two tickets. And we were like, mm, we're good. What? We've, got We've got plans to go to sushi. And my dad was just like. That's absurd. You could have talked at the World Series? No. You, could get, you probably could have gotten sushi at the World Series. <laughs> We were just like, no, thanks. We'd like to stare at each other at a sushi restaurant. I don't know. Well, but, we so, all have our, regret yeah, our regrets. That, that is one. So, yeah, Missouri yeah. girl who married a Canadian and married into probably the best, most loving possible situation. What, and what's the first thing? Or the, what is the thing <laughs> that you noticed the most about Canadians that you didn't oh. know? when you came yeah good question um well i was just like what are felts like those words where you're like felts or like 
I we don't call even them know what something that different. What is that? We call them markers. Oh yeah, like, mark you know, or um, people say produce. Yeah. And like, so more words or loonies and toonies, those sorts of things. Um, people wise, though, in truly incredibly friendly. Yeah. Truly friendly. But coming from the Midwest, very friendly people. So I wasn't like, oh, Canada is it, like, but actually very, very friendly people. Yeah. Um, but I've been trying to be really friendly with them lately. And they keep pushing me off like they're they're trying to keep a distance or so it's weird. <laughs> keep going. Oh, are we back? I'm sorry. That might have been my fault. You were just frozen there. Yeah, it's okay. Um, but yeah, so Abbotsford though in BC, I mean the the thing I'm just struck by too is the climate, like the beautiful. It's incredible. So I love it, love it. I love that I met a Canadian. I live here now, and we have yeah, it's five. Lovely. It's beautiful, and you have five children. Five. Now, did you? Uh, I was told that you homeschooled your kids and then sent them to school. And then the school yes. sent them back to you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> technically, yes. So when my husband, Aaron was homeschooled. So okay. he's one of nine and I was raised public. So um, when we had our kids, I was like, I had no idea what homeschooling was. I knew one kid growing up that was homeschooled. So, but when our oldest was about to go to school, it felt like we were making like the trajectory of his life to put in what school to send him to. So he was young and I had two, two others at that time. And then I soon had three others and I just wanted them, I wanted them all home together. We, we weren't ready to start sending them off so we kept them home now that said I would not necessarily call my my style homeschooling it would be more it was kind of unschooling so we did a, we just my kids are very active they like to be outside so um it was a lot of, and it was the early years so it was reading and math and then we were a part of a co-op um so we had that we had the homeschool um, I think I have it in me. Yeah. Like it, it, it came a bit naturally because I wanted to have them home. But then when we had our fifth baby, um, my oldest was seven and I didn't, my husband was actually like, I feel like we're doing them a disservice baby to go to school. So, um, the Lord led us to Abby Christian and it has been, I don't know if that was the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I love that. I but but honestly, we had no ties to it. Aaron was like, oh, yeah, like I've heard of it. We didn't yeah. know anything about it. So um, when we got there and we got them in, it just was an amazing fit. And everything about that school has been incredible. Yeah. Um, and then uh, this year happened, <laughs> 2020. So <laughs> um, now they're back home and... So how is that going? Are you uh, yeah. okay? It's, are you are you like are you slotting right back into what you used to do, or is it like is it okay. very? Yeah, good question. I'm going to ask you in a second what your day looks like. So oh, be God. prepared for that. Good. Okay. So um, what when this all kind of happened, I was like, I sought out um, my dearest friend who is already homeschooling. And was like, what do I do? Tell me what to read. Tell me what, what is this supposed to look like? Because my kids are at such different ages now. And I have four that are in school. So also like middle school is not just playing outside anymore. It's, you got to do this proper. So, yeah. um, but the things that I would, and there's amazing podcasts um, 
in regards to homeschooling in this time. Okay. That is happening. So one of them is called Wild and Free, and it, it was just about mothering and parenting and homeschooling in the pandemic. Okay. And a huge thing that I was hearing and saying was that um, a big thing we need to do is connect over correct. So being having connection with your kids being the most important thing, especially in a time where <coughs> emotions are all over the place. Um, there's fear out there. There's all, I mean, it, we're going through all sorts of things every single day, all yeah. sorts of emotions. So um, focusing on connecting with your kids over correcting them. Yeah. So that can be in um, all sorts of cases, but especially when it comes to you now be being their teacher. So I've been mother, our home has just been like, they go to school, they come home and I have snacks ready for them and we play, we do whatever we want. And now it's an environment of, okay, mom has to actually teach you. There's actually things that you have to, yeah, you know, so potentially stressful, but I found a great piece in the connecting over correcting. And then um, I wanted to just establish a rhythm with them. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things I was reading about too, is just finding your family rhythm. So yeah. for us, that looks totally different than another family that has um, lesser kids or the same amount of kids. But what does your family like to do? What do we find important? Start with those things and then move into... So, find so what, what do you do? What, what kinds of things do your family do? Give me, a, give me a typical, typical day at the tier home. Do we wait? What time do we get up? I'm not sure when we first get up. <laughs> no, our oldest is a very early riser. He's usually like six, six thirty, but he's twelve. Okay. So that'll, um, that'll end soon, won't it? I know well, everyone's been that. saying that, but I'm like, I don't know if. He's just, uh, he's, Ollie is the kid that he, he just is so in love with life that he wakes up ready for every day. What are we going to do? He's always been that way. Always. So, um, school days, school days, we, it's, screens are saved for weekends. Okay. So, um, the weekends they can wake up and do Disney Plus, which we got. At the beginning of quarantine, I was like, we're getting Disney Plus. Yeah. So um, they, they read. And that is actually huge for mine because they're, they don't ever sit still enough, long enough to read. They're not readers. I became a reader like in my 30s. So it's like, I'm not, I wouldn't expect my kids to be the same way. They want to be moving and doing stuff. And we just are too busy to yeah. sit down. So... Um, reading is where they start. And then um, we, we do coffee and I read my Bible while they're reading. And you, they know you give, that. Do you give all of them coffee or just, is that just you? Oh, he just, he just started making his a few days okay. ago. Okay, I, I didn't know. Maybe they're, yeah. Oh. Um, you gotta get no. them hooked early, right? I know, they do a tea, we do an afternoon tea. So yeah, breakfast, then um, the things that I found to be that I wanted to keep at most important was family Bible time. Um, what do you and, do during family Bible time? What is that, what is that? Yeah, so, well, at first we were doing the, um, the family field guide from church. Yeah. Because it's very like simple to follow and they, basically mine need to do something while we read so they'll they'll journal they'll draw what what speaks to you in this scripture like getting them to actually uh think about it meditate on it mull it over as kids that yeah. usually comes out from mine in drawing yeah so um yeah we were doing those and then our school gave us a devotional um and like this week, for example, it's fruits of the spirit. Oh, good. Um, so you, like, for how me, long does it I, last? How long does your how long does that Bible time last? Probably 
15 to 20 minutes. Okay. Everyone's and, paying attention all that time, the whole time, 15 to 20? Um, so that's where doing something with their hands is key. Yes. So when I'm reading aloud to them, they need to be doing something. And then you think they're not listening, but they're actually listening. And being the active kids that mine are, we are actually like a family of kinesthetic learners. So we yeah. all learn. Like in college, I would learn on the elliptical, like yeah. with flashcards, like, okay, I got my facts, but they're the same way. They need to be doing something while they learn and they actually are retaining it when I ask them like, so when you get to the heart, what is this? What do you think about this passage? Like, so it's getting, I mean, and the reality is when I'm getting my kids off to school to be there at 825, you gotta wake up really early to have Bible time together before yeah. school. So then you think, oh, we'll just do it at dinner time, but then. Everyone's so tired. Yeah, so yeah. really an amazing thing in this time is that we get to start when we want and we get to read the Bible. That's the first thing. I wanted Bible to be first thing. Yeah. So then you can expound on it. Like they're making a tree of the fruits of the spirit. Like oh, good. things like that, that they like to do art. Are you a really creative person though? Like somebody's gonna be listening to you right now going, I could never do any of that because I'm not creative. No, no, because it's also this many kids and being a mom at home, you, I find joy in finding those kind of things to do. So, or if it's like a shift in your mindset of like, um, I think a big in homeschooling, a big thing for me in homeschooling is like taking an idea and then making it ours. So like, yeah okay, let's read about the fruits of the spirit, but let's, like our school devotional had suggested drawing something and, and making a fruit for each of the characteristics of the fruit of the spirit. So then we kind of ex do our own thing on that. Yeah. So it's not, I don't find that I'm making, like sometimes I get my own ideas, but a lot of times I just adapt them from what I've read other people are doing and make, make it fit for my kids and our home. But that said, my husband is incredibly creative. He is a landscape designer. So oh, wow. our family actually lends to creativity that comes through him. They all like to draw. They're all really into that. So that kind of activity actually comes easier to them. Yeah. So that's great. By, um, what other stuff goes on? Do, yeah, you guys, so then, do you have them sit down in a room and work on their stuff or is it okay. so, yeah, loose? I can show you. Oh, that oh we're going to get a tour. That's the school room. That right room that, I'm lo that we're looking at right down there? Yes. So that's oh. like a sun room. It oh, yeah. was like a coffee room um, that we, it was just, it was just a room. It's a gorgeous room. It's all windows. And so when this all happened, I said to Aaron, I'm like, well, the thing that's like going to be crux is I don't want to have everything on the dining room table all the time. And then, oh, we got to eat here. You got to move your stuff. So, yeah. so you made a special room for it. Well, yes, he built me a room. Wow. Yeah. What a guy. No, no. <laughs> he put a table across the windowsills and they just, it just, sits there a piece of wood so they all all they the all kids work in that same room together all of yeah. them yeah cool. and they all get along and there's never any fighting there's always so they had, always getting along <laughs> we've had to rearrange seating yeah like every like every school teacher does you realize who yes, gets along you, and who does not you move desks you move your pods and stuff yeah. like that are you are you finding yourself uh enjoying this whole process or are you finding yourself frustrated with it all no to be honest um i came into it i think because i've i've experienced it i've tasted it and i wanted i honestly in my heart wanted to taste it again i wanted to know could this be something we could do because they're at different ages um so it's been like of course i'm not gonna 
I'm not going to downplay it. Of course, it's taking everything in me to stay patient, to stay um, calm. To, I, I mean, you can't help but feel claustrophobic. Most of the time they're asking, everyone has questions at the very same time. Yeah. But then there's those beautiful moments where you're, everyone is kind of finding their groove. And yeah. um, we're doing a lot, like, so after Bible, we would do read aloud. And I, that's something that also doesn't always happen when you're a really busy family, when sports start. But even my 12 year old is, we're all reading a book together that I'm reading to them. And that hasn't happened since they were very little. So putting that, making time for that and saying, I want that yeah. in their day has been important. And then um, probably one of the harder things too is I, with five kids, you have to master multitasking. That like, I'm not- I would imagine so. My, my oldest, his Mother's Day card, he did like a mother, like mother, and he wrote um, a word for every- Yeah, every it's like a word. acronym, yeah. Acronym, thank you. Yeah. I need to work on that if I'm gonna school that. Okay, so O was octopus. Yeah, was well- like, Okay. But he said, you're a multitasker and you have all these arms and you just, so I, it, that's what you have to do with that many kids. But with their schooling, I'm finding I have to be, I have to do one thing at a time. Yeah. So I can't, I can't be like, yeah, I'll help you with your math while I'm like stirring yeah. the, I have to like. Yeah, focus. Yeah. I'm going to sit down. So you say to the others, when you're helping the one, you say, you know, I've got to help Lila right now. She needs a lot of help. Can you please give me a few minutes? So they're, they're very patient with me. I'm very patient with them. And um, it, it all works not, out. It is not perfect by any means, but we are together. Yeah. And, and they're, they're growing in ways that we so a surprising, a, a surprising providence then, a surprising yeah. benefit in, yeah. in all of it, which is really, that's really great. Can you recommend yeah. a book? Can you recommend a book or two? Like you okay. must have read a thousand books. Recommend your top two for, for parents or others who are out there, got little kids, recommend a couple. Um, so what I'm currently reading is The Mission of Motherhood. Ooh, cool. um, it's by Sally Clarkson, who she... Um, and her husband have a ministry of whole heart ministries, I think it is, but um, they are a homeschooling family. So it does have a homeschooling bent, but the whole point is that um, so much of mothering is our, like it, it has to be seen as our work, our life yeah. work. Um, now I am able and very thankful that I can stay at home. I know that's not the case for everyone. So, it can lend more. I think I, I gravitate more towards a home lifestyle. Yeah. But, um, the idea of just mothering being um, my mission field right now, because you can feel like, what am oh, I Oh, you feel, yeah, closed off right. and you, the society doesn't necessarily value right. it as much, but what a, right. what, a rich, what a rich blessing to be able to give your life for the lives of these other, these, these other little ones. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, then anything, you... anything by Paul David Tripp, like he's yeah, got he's a lot good. of grace-based parenting. Um, did, I, did I freeze again? Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. It's okay. One of my maybe, kids is probably streaming maybe it's the something. Maybe outdoor connection or something. No. So anything, his devotions, like um, yeah. he has a poetry book, My yeah. Heart Cries Out, or his 365 devotions, like something yeah. like that. That's I, great. Paul David Tripp. I 
quite like him. So then another one. Hey, okay, last one. Give me one more. Homeschooling realm is teaching from rest. And that one is kind of weird to think about this idea of nothing in this situation or my life is restful in any way possible. However, when I can give to my kids from a place of resting in the Lord, I'm a completely different mom. But if I'm giving from the cup that's like already like, you know, filled with whatever, if it's filled with my time with the Lord and I'm filled with um, God's truth, God's word, that's what's going to come out of my mouth. So having that rest in the Lord and being able to teach from this, from that rest, I have gained a lot from that. So, yeah. So we've got like, I've got four minutes left. So I want to make sure oh. that uh, people have a chance to ask you questions if they have any questions at all while they're doing that. When did you come to Northview? When did you start coming to Northview? Oh, okay. When our Freddie, when our second was two, so eight years ago. Okay, good. And then uh, East Abbey, when it began. Why'd you go to East Abbey? Um, we live very close to that location. And um, we love Downs. Loved that campus. We were going to Westport. Yep. Um, and then fellowship and um, just being in, going to church in our neighborhood, very close. Yeah, it's cool. It, it, it's really cool. So that was, um, that was kind of what, and of course, you do things through prayer and you yeah. ask the Lord what's for our family. And has, it been, it's been, has it been good though? It's been good to go there? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think too, it's a different feel also for the kids, like yeah. having, um, like there's some awesome volunteers there in the children's ministry and um, be even just being around Bonnie and uh, Greg is an awesome teacher. So just those aspects, you're like, this is really great. And yeah. uh, so those end fellowship is, top-notch so. yeah that's good what is Abby Christian's there, people are yeah. trying to trying to sell right. abby christian trent is trent is on here trying to <laughs> sell abby it's ridiculous oh man but yeah that said that i feel like our school has set us up for success that's I'm awesome thankful for that i feel like um in oh but one of the things i did want to say a huge thing that that i felt a weight lift when I went to go get my kids' things and books from school. Um, I was chatting with one of the staff and she was like asking me how I'm doing. And um, I said, well, I don't really know if I'm doing enough. I'm just kind of winging it. And she said, you know what? This We aren't expecting you to homeschool. We're not expecting you to distance school she's like this is crisis learning yeah like really this is a crisis time so i have found great comfort in being the constant for my kids so if we don't do anything educational in the day am i being a steadfast person am i walking with the lord am i right. being a mom that walks in the spirit right that's that's yeah, you can start life. expecting so much from yourself, right? And you can end up just beating yourself up because you didn't achieve what you had planned out that day and everything ran in, you know, you ran into so many troubles and then you get down in the evening about it. But it is yeah. crisis. We have, honestly, there's got to be a lot more grace we give ourselves in this time because, oh my goodness, right. it's not it's easy to be at home all the time. And it's a global no. pandemic. It's, nobody's yeah. done that before. So we're learning. And the kids, it's not easy for... I have some kids that are very social and I have other kids that are like, I'm fine. But yeah. I see it. He, they see you up on the mountain every day. So that's a place, great place to school your kids. And Bonnie is saying amen to you. Bonnie. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. Hey, yeah. I thank, you, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, I felt like I've learned a whole bunch about, about you. And next time I'm in Costco, I'll be able to ask you better questions. American. That's right. I know. That's right. We got to stick together. 
<laughs> well, I'm, I mean, I'm Canadian now, so I, I have, I don't know. Oh, you did? I feel like a third, I'm a third culture test? person. Sorry? Was it hard? Was the test hard? No. Nah. Okay. Oh, I'm not even supposed to say anything. I probably just gave up my citizenship by saying that to you. They <laughs> warned us repeatedly. Don't you dare say anything. We'll track you down. Oh, so, man, anyway, God bless you. Thank you so much for Thank being so you. faithful and working so hard with your kids. Thank and you. uh, it's fantastic to hear. I, I look forward to seeing you in the flesh sometime. Yes. And we're oh, I'm looking awesome. forward to going to church again. Yeah, I so, know. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, God bless everybody. Have a good weekend. I would say have a good long weekend, but isn't every day basically the same now? That's what I'm like, like didn't even I wake know up in the long weekend. I wake you? up in the morning. I'm like, I, what day is it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the next day. That's it. Oh, man. Anyway. Thank you. Thanks so much. God bless. See you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.